and I had to I had to do some some serious studying on this thing. And I have one question before I get started. And that question is, do you know where your authority lies? And the reason for that question is because of the topic tonight. And the topic is walking in the authority of God is your foundation firm. And when God was dealing with me about this, I had so many different questions. Um, I was like, okay, Lord, well, how do we obtain this authority? And how do we operate in this authority? How do we train in this authority? What are, are there different categories, if you will, of this, in, of operating in the authority of God? And as he began to deal with me, he allowed me to do some research. So I looked up the word spiritual authority. And the definition is the God-given right to receive and use God's power that flows from the indwelling Holy Spirit. Again, that definition of spiritual authority is the God-given right to receive and use God's power that flows from the indwelling Holy Spirit. So I, I begin to <clears throat> look at some things and I begin to, to ask God some questions. I'm like, okay, Lord, so how does it all begin? How does this foundation, how does this authority begin to, how do I receive this authority? How is it that we are able to not just receive it, but use it and walk in it. And God dealt with me about the scripture in <laughs> Joshua, the 24th chapter. And in that, God is giving instruction. And we're going to read that in just a moment. When we receive Christ, as our Lord and Savior, because he sits, because he died, he rose, he ascended, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. We too, as I do, have done the research, we too, because he has ascended and he has all power and all authority, we too, in that salvation and in our walk with Christ, have that same power and authority. The thing that happens is most times, we're not in that. We don't stay in that realm in order to use the authority that God has given us and graced us with. We have to stay in a specific realm and that realm is in the realm of the spirit. So though we have natural eyes, natural ears, of course, a mouth. We have to entune ourselves to the realm of the spirit. So we have to switch our sight to the things of the spirit, switch our ear hearing to that which is in the spirit realm. And as we operate in the realm of the spirit, we are able to operate in the authority of God. That authority allows us to trample over snakes and scorpions. That authority allows us to cast down imaginations and demolish strongholds and break bondages and destroy yokes. That authority allows us to overcome the trials and or circumstances, if you will, that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. But if we allow ourselves to forget to whom resides on the inside of us and we walk in our own will, that authority becomes useless because we have to stay in that connection and in that connected place in Christ. And in doing so, we have access we have access to that power. We have access to that authority because God don't, he don't make punks. God does not make us weak minded. He allows us to be strong. He tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So in doing so, that's how we do. Well, that's how we stay connected to that authority and that power, doing the things of getting in his word, digesting his word, denying our flesh, seeking after him with a relentless pursuit, whether it's in worship, whether it's in praise. 
and in, and we have to know where our weaknesses are. Those things that can have us to compromise against that which God has for us and that which God has freely given us. It's not something that we have to ask for because he's already given it to us. The choice is whether we choose to walk in it or whether and whether we choose to apply and use it. So I have a question. When things come up, when circumstances come up in our day-to-day -day lives, what is our typical initial response? Is our initial response to go and ask God for guidance? Or is our initial response, oh man, here we go again, something else on the platter. I don't know how much more I can take. What's, what would be some of you guys' first responses when circumstances just come up, Those, especially those unexpected ones? Anybody have an answer? I start thinking negative stuff, like what I'm going to do. How Not negative, but I start saying what I'm going to do, how I'm going to figure out. God, you going to show me or show me the way how to figure out. I just, I have to trust God on every situation. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, my first response was, oh, no. Now what? <laughs> I don't know what to do. How can I fix it? What can I do? Right, and, and, and that's why I'm going to try to think negative, try to think positive, and everything will come on through if you think positive. Anybody else? I'm not going to say what I think. Okay. Say what you say. Because I'm school words. What What do you think when the first thing that pops up when stuff happens on happens time? Well, what I'll say is not a gig. Not the same thing. I understand that completely. I understand that completely. You know, when we have the envelope... Go, go ahead, Apostle. For me, when stuff starts to happen... And and this is just for me. I'm not saying this is everybody, but for me, when things start to happen, I immediately wonder what is it that I am supposed to learn. I I really it it really can be a heavy hard place, but I've learned to ask the question: What am I to learn from this? Because I, I recognize that this thing is happening, whatever it is. And I recognize that it don't feel good to the skin that I'm in. Right, right, <laughs> Why do right, I ever right, recognize right. that? I, right. I recognize that I feel like I, I'm being challenged or I'm being pumped or, or, or that the devil just straight up forgot that the last battle he and I was in, I kicked his butt. And then I am the same person that's going to kick it again because right. I'm not going to give up. I've, I've come right. too far. And, and, and where Tanisha said, I say my Sunday school words backwards, I, I, I remember the time when I did. And I remember the right. time when I used to go to the negative emotions. So what I'm saying to you guys is that it comes a time in your life where you'll grow out of that place that your mind immediately takes you to. Amen. That's absolutely Amen. right. Amen. Thank you for that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. See, when we when we take this walk real, real serious and when we understand that in this walk, we have been equipped with certain tools and certain strategies and that power and that authority and those authorities there's different categories of this authority. The top one, the first one that I found out about was the authority over yourself. That was the first one that, that popped up when I did my research. That's why I asked that question because I remember a time that it, I, my initial response won't godly, nor was it holy. And my mouth would run real, real good in all the wrong places. But I'm learning that that's operating in the natural, in my flesh. 
And because there's no good thing that dwells in our flesh, I can't conquer flesh with flesh. I can only feed my flesh with my flesh, but I can't conquer anything. I can't defeat the enemy with my flesh. We, we can't that we have to be in the realm of the spirit and we have to. It's a mindset change. This walk with God. <clears throat> this walk with God allows us if we allow him to give us a mindset change where we won't do the doom and gloom and the woe is me and the pity parties and the, oh God, not again, here we go. What else can pop off? What else can happen? But it'll give us the, the understanding that God, you're doing a work within a work. And you said that iron sharpens iron. And because he has a will and a way that is perfect, when things pop up, there are lessons. That's why I love that key part that Apostle said. There are lessons to be learned in everything. In everything that happens, we can either choose to learn the lesson or end up choosing to have to repeat the cycle all over again. And I've learned that from experience because doing it my way has me go around the same cycle. Operating in self has me get defeated unnecessarily and I'm not we're not supposed to be defeated. God already defeated defeat. So because he defeated defeat and because he dwells within the inside and because I'm we're walking or we say we're walking and we're living with and in him then things change our verbiage changes. Our postures change. Well how can I have authority over myself? Self discipline Choosing to do something different versus the, the thing that would be the first response. The, to denying our flesh, denying my flesh when I want to pop off. Instead of doing that, let me use my, my spiritual weapon of worship. Let me position and posture myself in, in, in the word of God. Let me just dwell with him and sup with him in that secret place until I can get what I need. And no matter how long it takes, sometimes that wait, that waiting allows us to not only be postured properly, but that waiting allows us to be endowed even the greater and even the more in the things that are necessary to walk this walk with Christ, that power and that authority, because it's necessary. The foundation that we need to be able to be more than a conqueror. To be able to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. To be able to be that good steward unto Christ and unto our fellow brothers and sisters. These things come with having a firm foundation. Because if our foundation is not firm and it's cracked and it's got these dents and it's got these other underlining reservations, if you will, then we're going to be unstable. And the Bible says that an unstable man, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So then I had to come up and think and ask myself, well, why is it so easy at times to operate in so-called self-authority, which is useless, versus the grand supreme authority? Because the authority of God is supreme. It's sovereign and supreme. So it doesn't end. It doesn't decrease. It doesn't waver. It doesn't shift. It doesn't sway in any way. It's firm. He is firm in everything that he does. When we, when we are not sure in our walk with God, it allows everything about us, our posture, our mind, our thoughts, our actions, our gestures, it allows them to be wayward. It allows us to straddle the fence, if you will. It allows us to doubt. And it allows us to not be firm in our decision. And it at times can allow us to question, well, dog, do I really have a relationship with God? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves unnecessarily because God has a way that's mighty sweet and God has a way that is sure and his ways are perfect and his ways are just. We have to be willing to trust that, walk in that, 
have faith that he is the orchestrator of all, that he is that chief cornerstone, that he is that refuge and that fortress and that mighty strong tower and that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, that he is the word and before the word was and the word in the beginning, the word was God and God is the word and because he is the word, he is. He is. But then there's those times where <laughs> I've been guilty. I, I'll be the first to admit. I feel like I got a better way than he does. Or I can make it happen faster than he can. In my studies, I found out that that's compromise. And compromise is going, it's a simple definition. It's a simple definition. And in that definition, it is it is an agreement whereby a disagreement is settled. But evil compromise is when a person decides to act contrary to his or her beliefs that leads to sin. So every time I said, I got this, I'm going contrary to my beliefs because God says he got it. God says that he does all things well. God says that, God, that God I can today. do all things through him. I can do, I can only do all things through him. So when Latasha decided to say, you know what, God, you're taking too long. I got it. I'm gonna do it. And then when everything erupts and blows up in my face, I have a dare audacity to get upset. And then I did the blame game. And then I became mad at the world. Where if I would have operated in the right posture and in the authority that is within me, I wouldn't have had to go through all of that. I wouldn't have had to get upset. I wouldn't have had to do the blame game. I wouldn't have had to spew venom out of my mouth against people that had nothing to do with the situation from Jump Street. If we don't posture ourselves, I don't know why God keeps dealing with me about that word, but it's for a reason. Posture is important. It is imperative. And it is a part of being able to operate with power in the authority of God. If our posture and position is not right, we can't operate in the things of God like we're supposed to. Our foundation won't be firm like it needs to be. And there is a scripture that I, I want to bring in real, real quick in this part. And that first scripture is going to be Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Yes. And it reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is how we train. This is how we train in the authority of God. This is how we begin to operate in the, in the things and the authority and the power of God. Because he said, he said right here, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. So there is nothing, nothing that he does not already have governed meant over he governs over it that's another attribute or another quality of having the spiritual authority in god is it's a governing it's a it's a shifting it's a swaying it's a it's a concreteness and a firmness in in that authority that moves things and that can orchestrate and that can re reorganize and reconstruct and replenish and in that authority because he has it in heaven and in earth and then he goes to say, 
Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. How do we train in the authority of God? We do what he tells us to do. We become those disciples. We, we go and we share his word, giving him glory and letting, his, letting the light in us of him shine to those who are in dark places, to those who are weary, to those who are battling in their minds, to, for those that think that life is not worth living, for those who think that all hope is gone. We are to go teach it to all nations, his word. But how we can't teach something if we don't study. We can't teach anything if we don't train ourselves in the word of God. And training ourselves in the word of God isn't just merely reading it. It's not just merely studying it. We got to walk it. We got to live it. We have to wear the word of God like we wear our clothes. We have to wear the word of God and the things of God, just like we wore sin when, when, the, when the enemy was our father. We have to wear it and it has to be constant. It's a constant choice. It's a constant decision, despite what life throws at us. And he, he tells us that in doing so, teaching to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Ghost, all three, he didn't leave not one out. The whole Trinity is in verse 19. And it takes the whole Trinity to operate in the authority, in the supreme sovereign authority of God. It takes the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to be able to activate this authority, to walk in this authority, to apply this authority. This authority allows our flesh to die daily because in doing so, we're not doing what would come natural to us, but we're doing that which is required of us. This walk with God comes with requirement. It comes with requirements as well as prerequisites. And the prerequisites in order to use this authority that he gives us is we have to walk in him, live in him suck with him, read his words, be disciples or duplicates of walking, living epistles on this earth. And because he sits on high and on the right hand of the father, when we gave our lives to him and we surrendered, we too, we too are able to have that same a power and authority. <clears throat> so when he says that we can speak to the mountains, and they can be, they'll be moved, that we can speak those things not as though they were. That's that authority. That's that, that's that foundation that's firm in the things of God. So what happens when we find that there's a crack in our connection? Has anybody ever felt like sometimes that it seems like the communication wave between you and God was a little bit distorted? Yeah. What what were what were some of the things that happened when those things happened? What what were your thoughts when that happened? How did you feel? Bad, nervous. Hope I didn't go too far. God didn't go talk to me. What did you do to to shift yourself? I would pray. I would just I, I say well I I I would pray and I would talk to him and whatever I felt like I was wrong about I would try to confess it. And just pray that you know, you forgive me if I felt like I did something wrong that would separate me from him. Right. Anybody else? So there are certain things that just come as simple as because we are children of God and cohabitants in the house of God. We have this authority. Notice there were two things because we're children of God and cohabitants. In the house of God, we have this authority and administration over certain areas. Well, what are these certain areas? I spoke of one, 
which is the authority over yourself. Mm -hmm. Then there is the authority over finances, over demons, over sickness and disease, over regions or nations, and authority to overthrow the strong man of a nation. As I was doing the study, I was like, Lord, that sounds like some power punching dynamics right there. That was just me and his conversation, just between me and him. And I said, Lord, how do we fashion and position ourselves correctly in this thing? And it's all about whether we choose to walk this walk correctly the way he has commanded us to, or whether we choose to try to serve two gods, which is not going to work. It's not going to work. We can't. He is a jealous God. He don't do idols. He doesn't do idolatry. And he is not about to have any other God before us. So just like he chose those 12 disciples and he trained them and they walked with him and they supped with him and they they were imparted. He imparted in them everything that they needed. The same way Christ did that for his disciples. That's why God has given us leadership. Leadership to teach, to guide, to direct, to groom, to prune, to even chastise. They, Our leaders see when we are straying, even if we don't say anything. They see because they are in tune with God. And as we have all known and heard that scripture, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger. They will not follow. So when God is doing what he does in us, we have a choice. And it's a very pivotal choice, if you will. And that choice is, am I going to choose to walk this walk, to stay in this walk with God? Or am I going to choose it the slightest buffeting of my flesh to say, you know what? I'm good. You go ahead and keep that. All because we feel justified in acting or responding the way we do. That's not operating in the authority of God. That's to be trained and to be active, to allow it to activate is all about denying this right here. This, this flesh, this, and the more we do it, the easier it becomes. It's just like riding a bike. You're going to fall off that bike. I don't even know how many times. But the point when you realize that you've positioned yourself on that seat real good and you've got a good grip on those bike handles and your legs are firm on those pedals and you realize that you start riding that bicycle and you're not swaying anymore, mm -hmm. but you're going straight. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if, you can, if you can visualize it with me, the posture of the child riding that bike is not wobbling, but they're firm. It's at that point that riding the bicycle becomes easy. The nerves have calmed down. The body is not so loose, but it's got a strongness to it that keeps that keeps the hands firm on the handlebars where we're not going like this, but where we're moving forward. But it comes with some falls. But the more we operate in the things of God and the more that we work and, 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 and practice and train and apply the things that God has for us, the more easier it becomes and the less likely we are to operate in our flesh because that flesh compromises our walk. Our flesh compromises our walk with God because it goes completely contrary to that which he has ordained and orchestrated for us. He desires for us to operate in that power and in that authority that he's given us. But if we don't do that, we can't blame God for that. We can't because he's already given it to us. And because he's already given it to us and because he's made it readily available, 
we have to be willing. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to sit here and lie. It's going to be, I remember a time where I used to stub my toe. And as, as, as Nisha said, saying my Sunday school verses backwards, that was the first response. I sat down tonight at the table and I hit my knee on this iron leg. And instead of what would have typically come out in the past, I was like, oh, Jesus. That didn't happen overnight, though. Mm -hmm. It's about choosing to change and shift. And it's not always easy. It's not going to always be easy, but it will become easier the more we apply the things of God. Anybody have any questions so far? No, I like the analogy with the bike, though. I like, you know, you know, it's funny. I never really, like, succeeded in learning to ride a bike. Like, I can't ride a bike to this day. I, like, I drive a car, but I don't ride a bike. But I, I can understand that analogy because I remember the times I tried to ride a bike feeling wobbly. And I never made it past that wobbly with the bike. Now, someone did, but I didn't know I didn't. And so I thank God for that because, yeah, and, you know, but when we are serving God, that yes. wobbly, it, you know, could be like things that we're used to doing in, in our flesh. You know, we, we so I, I could see that. That makes sense to me because it's like mm -hmm. I'm wobbly. So I, I still got things in my flesh I'm doing, but I'm trying to get it right with God, but I'm still, you know, doing this, doing that. But when I get steady, I finally put down my flesh. I finally let it go. So I thank God for that. That was a good analogy. I thank God for it. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's easy at times to it's easy at times to forget. Um, even though we shouldn't, sometimes we get a little too overwhelmed and we don't put things in the right perspective. And when we don't put things in the right perspective, it causes that that wobble and that shaking. And we have to be willing to take that thing or those things that are causing those waivers or those shakes to take them to God and allow him to help teach us how to deny. But we have to do our part. It's not all on God. I can't stress that enough. It's not all on God. We have to be willing to do our part, denying our flesh. No, it's not going to be easy. I will reiterate that one more again. But it's worth it. And the being worth it for me allows me to see and understand it doesn't have to be easy for it to be worth it. That anything, there's a saying that anything worth having is worth fighting for. I love God. So I'll fight to keep my love for him. We have to get that tenacious about this walk. And in doing that, that authority and that holy boldness, it, it is strengthened. It's empowered. It's, it become, we become even the more fortified in the things of God, the more that we choose to use those tools and attributes that he's already given us. It's not always about the easy. <laughs> it, it really isn't. It wasn't easy for Christ to be betrayed with a kiss. It wasn't easy for Christ to be wrongfully accused of doing wrong when he was innocent of any and all wrong. It wasn't easy for him to be crucified, but he endured it because he loves us. He did it without a mumbling word because he understood the assignment. And he already knew it wasn't going to be easy, but it was going to be worth it. He knew it was going to be tedious and it was going to be treacherous at times, but he knew it was going to be worth it. And it was because of his love for us. It allowed him to endure these things. It's not that he, yes, he loved and loves. His love is always growing. It's never, it never stops. So even in those hard places, we have to be willing to choose that power and that authority that fortifies our spirit man, that equips us to be able to stand as a bold soldier in Christ, because in God, we are to be bold. There is a boldness in him that, that we are readily accessible to. 
Because we can't go to the enemy and say, Satan, I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Who, 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 what are you going to do? He ain't going to move. But Satan, I bind you and plead the blood of Jesus. And we bind every witch and what we have to come. It's a sound that comes with authority. It is a posture, a sound, a power, and even as far as a visual sense and seeing and discerning that comes in operating in the authority of God. It's not something that you can come weak-minded with. A weak mind can't operate in the authority of God. Double-mindedness can't reside in the authority of God. Flesh can't operate in the authority of God. Doing things our way, oh, I'll keep it on me. Latasha doing things her way, that's not operating in the authority of God. But walking as a bold soldier, being willing to lay aside every weight that may so easily beset me. These are the things that help us to not only keep the authority that God has given us activated, but it trains us in it. To be able to be that good steward over that which he's given us because life and death are in the power of the tongue so what we speak out of this thing right here is what's going to be what we're going to be tried by we're going to be tried by every word so if we're walking around thinking doom and gloom then we can't get upset when doom and gloom come if we're operating when life happens and on when which it does life happens on its terms Sometimes it's the enemy, sometimes it's the inner me, and then sometimes it's just a process. But how do we, how do we govern ourselves? It's all about how we govern ourselves. It's all about how we choose to use that which God has freely given us. He's given it to us freely. Because we're in a time where warfare right now is on some whole nother realm and we need part of having and operating in the authority of god is understanding that it comes with a, a a dominion authority what do i mean by dominion authority it, it comes with being able to take dominion over a thing or a circumstance or a place that authority allows us when we're in warfare, that that authority that God has given us allows us to take dominion over the, those evil, those evil thoughts and those strong men and those strongholds and those bondages and and, and hold it captive. To dismantle it, to, to, to dissever it, to to put it to naught. But if we're not operating in it. Then we are going to be defeated. And it's not because God isn't God. And it's not because God has changed or wavered. It's because we have not completely accepted and chose to walk in that which he has freely given us. So this warfare that so many of us have been enduring, it takes that supreme authority in God. There's no other way to be able to fight. There's no other way to be able to war in the spirit realm unless and only by that power, that that authority, that boldness, that that holy and bold confidence that God is. And because God is and because he said and because he orchestrated it, it is so. And because he's sovereign. There's no there's no lack. There's no lack in him. There's no lack in him. So what do we choose to do? Operate in our own will, which completely goes contrary, or choose to walk in his power and authority, which allows our foundation to be firm. What are some areas, if any, that we can sit here and say, that we need to operate more in the authority of God. And I, I'll go first. I don't mind. When life happens, sometimes I look at it with my natural eyes. And my eyes been going through some things. So when I see things with the wrong visual vision, 
it allows me to get anxious. My anxieties go up. Then stress and worry start trying to creep in. But I'm learning to see it in from the natural, the spiritual stance. I'm no, I'm learning that it is better to see and hear in the realm of the spirit than focus on the things in the natural because the things in the natural are temporary. They can be controversial. They are controversial. So I have to choose to set my eyes on those things which are in this realm of the spirit instead of seeing them for what my natural eyes may see them to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to say that I definitely you know, like um, one time someone called me early in the morning and I was just waking up and you know what they were saying wasn't quite what I need to hear right then. <laughs> and so but I thank God that even when that happened that that particular day I did good. You know, when that happened, I didn't react in my flesh like what well, was this, what's that? No, 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 no. I just I just stayed calm and it was like they didn't say nothing. I just said, Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that's that's between you and them, whatever, whatever. And Lord help help me to just do right. And I think I I I, I just went back to sleep. And that is just the power of God right there for me. So I just have to say, you know, be, because there are times that I've had conversations with people and I let my flesh take over instead of my right mind of looking at it in spirit. Look, no, nope, Satan, you can't have me. I'm not going to let this right here take me on a trip that I don't want to go on and be you know, being wrong with God. And so I I thank God that I chose not to take that trip then, especially being half sleep. You know, so I, 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 I'm just sleep like, <laughs> you know, but I, I just give God the glory. So. I, I thank God for that. And, and yeah, so that, that's my one. Anybody else? Walk in your spiritual authority or, div or divine ability is living under the influence of God's grace and unlimited favor. Walking in his authority comes with so many different powerful privileges, if you will. And those things are the things that are necessary in this walk. Those things are that grace that, that, that never ceases, that, that grace that is that unmerited favor. It's the unlimited favor. That, so unlimited. So there's nothing that he can do. There's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing that is beyond his his ability to do what needs to be done in and for our lives. We just have to be willing to choose to walk in it. We have to want to walk in that authority, in that power, in that unlimited favor. We have to be willing to lay aside self completely to allow the God in us to rise up and make a standard within us because it's necessary. His standard is the standard that is good and perfect. His standard, his way is that perfect way. Our way pushes us away from him. His way draws us closer to him. His way allows us to be strengthened in him the more. His way allows us to be more assured and firm in the things that he has granted us and the things that he has spoken over us and the things that he has already allowed for us to begin to walk in. His, his, his power, his authority is pure, it's true, it's holy. It doesn't waver. It, it doesn't diminish. It doesn't, it doesn't stop. It doesn't. And the more we operate in the training. Well, what is that training? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. I'm going to read this one real quick. It says, and my speech. Nope, I'm going to start at verse 1. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, 
declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Verse five, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It's not about the $1,500 words, as I like to call them. It's not about speaking over somebody's head or not making it plain because God said that his word is so plain that even a fool could understand it. So it's, he didn't come with the excellency of words. He he didn't come with wanting to know anything about man's wisdom. He came with the wisdom of God. God teaches from his from the Father's wisdom, and in doing so, we too are supposed to do the same thing. It's not the wisdom in this earthly realm is of null and void to everything that God's wisdom speaks and has power over. Because his wisdom is everlasting. His wisdom is that firm wisdom. It doesn't waver. His wisdom is just and it's pure. And it's filled with purpose. His wisdom allows us to go and allow us to take, make free those that are in captive. His wisdom allows the bonds to be broken. His wisdom allows his doors to be opened that no man can shut. His, his wisdom teaches us how to operate and to walk in this in this race and in this war and on this battle and in this army of God the way that we need to be and in doing so it doesn't have to be all theological theological words and 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 and, and 22 letter words it's as simple as Jesus when things get so, so, ooh, if you will, or overwhelming, if you will, that's that great name. And calling on that great name is calling on that authority that's needed. Calling on Christ is, is calling on uh, that, that ability that the flesh does not have, but in God, we have it. And because God is in us and because we are in Christ Jesus, we too have that same power, that same authority and we can speak i bind and cast down every imagination and every thought that's coming in my mind that is contrary to the will of god and i speak that my mind will be settled in christ and that the word of god will reign afresh in my mind not only in my mind but in my heart and that my mind and my heart will be connected into the things of god because it's all about that it has to be connected just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are connected, three but one, our mind and our heart and our spirit has to be on one accord. And if that one accord, if there's one part of that cord that's off, we're off. And then when we're off, our flesh is more likely to rule over versus the power of God and the authority of God ruling and reigning in and through us is that does that make sense yeah yes ma'am sister d okay um so the things that you that we're talking about tonight a lot of people don't get this because they have not been taught and they're not being they um a lot of churches aren't teaching this so you've got people going to church, go to church, get all dressed up, or they might not, or they get dressed down, whichever way they want to go nowadays. Yes, ma'am. And everybody is getting the knowledge and wisdom. They're getting the I feel good sermon or make you, mm -hmm. you know, but you're not getting yes, wisdom or knowledge of, 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 of the authority that you have in Christ Jesus. And so when 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 things come, when, let's say let's 
let's talk about this pandemic. Yes, ma'am. When the pandemic hit, churches shut down like shoo, bars. They, two, three weeks later, it was like, okay, you can open up the grocery store, the bars, but the church was still shut down. Because mm -hmm. there was no there was no authority there. There was no wisdom. There was no understanding right. of the authority we have in God. The, the, and people people just shut down and they just went into a panic and a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, that's right. In God, they were people with it. Oh, I'm scared to go. I'm scared. I said like this. If I believe and if and 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 if God forbid that I get I got sick, I didn't die. But if I had to die, I would have won. We Come win on. anyway, and people don't understand that they just go into a panic. I'm a, I'm gonna get COVID. And I'm gonna die. And I'll be on the ventilator, and and it was so much panic it that was. they were sitting back laughing at us mm -hmm. when we were walking in authority. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. No sickness. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's you know, right. They just go to church. They just go to church. They don't have any of this that you're teaching. They have no understanding of the authority that they walk in, that they can pull down strongholds and principalities yeah. and witnesses in high places. Places. They don't even know that. That's true. That, that is so true. They don't know that. And they'll walk around with these bondages and wondering why I can't get free from cigarettes. I can't get free right. from fornication. I can't get free from drunkenness or or I can't get free from, from cursing or whatever it may be. You know, because you are not walking any in authority. You have no power. You're just is existing within the system that the enemy has created. That is so and, true. And not in the authority that God has given us. Good. You just said it earlier. You said he gave us authority to, to walk on snakes and demons and tread on all this you know yes, why aren't we you know that 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 is a that is a wonderful question yeah why aren't we you know we should that if is. something comes up and i was listening to what you said about the question something comes up in our life an apostle answered it but that's how we all should have answered it because yep. we have gotten and you know, I don't mean to just go on, but I'm just saying, it's oh, 25 okay. prayer. That's like he, almost a third of a year. Yes, and we should be able, to, like, when something comes against us, we should like stop and say, "Call on Jesus," or yes. say, "Lord, give me wisdom," and not go into, "Oh, what you know, woe is me," or whatever may may that be. Part. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, I just think what you're teaching tonight is is so meaningful, and I and I pray that we all receive it because a lot of people are not getting this. They, right. they aren't. Amen. 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 And you know, <laughs> when, when the pandemic, a lot of people ask me, Rebecca, are you nervous?" And I was like, "No." Well, why? You know, we, we can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. I said, everything happens for a reason. My response is everything happens for a reason. And either I'm going to trust God or I'm going to trust what, what man has got going on. And even though, even though the pandemic. Can we turn her, her as, mic? Her, that mic. That's her, we can't hear. She's shaking. As, as, as we begin to, to go into this, this pandemic, I never worry. Not one time because of the simple fact God is God and because he sees all and knows all and nothing takes him by surprise. Nothing takes him by surprise. So it was a simple choice for me. God is God. That's it. That's all. That settles it. He is the source of not only my strength, but he is my supplier. He is the, my protector. He is my shield and my buckler. I resisted getting the shot, but he was like, he had to minister to me about that. Mm -hmm. Not that I was putting my faith in the vaccine, because that's not what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I put my faith in God at all times. Thank God, no, it, had not, it has not hit me. I'm grateful. But for those that it had, and you're still here. Because see, 
Man had it misconstrued. They thought the shot was going to prevent them from catching COVID. They never said that. They never said that. We don't we don't take the time. We we as a people, we hear what we want to hear and we run with it. They never said that the vaccine was going to prevent you from getting COVID. They just said it would be less likely for you to deal with severe consequences of it like that. Right, right. So I had I I ended up me being me, I said, God, that's actually powerful. The people think that the shot was supposed to prevent them from getting COVID, and that was never said. That was an assumption. But what was said was that it would be less likely that you would die and deal with the more severe uh, symptoms of COVID-19. So how about we switch that to the spirit room real quick? God never said it was going to be easy. He never said that it was going to feel good. But he did say he, he'll he work it for our good. He did say that he would be with us every step. He would be right there. He did tell us that he would give us strength when we're weary. He did say that that no matter what it is, that lo, I'll be with you always. So in that authority, in that power, we don't have to settle. We don't have to settle. There's no settling in God. There is an assuredness in God. There is an establishing in God. There is an advancement in God. There is a boldness in God. But wavering is not God. Conditional is not God because he's unconditional and intentional about everything that he does. And this, this beautiful book that, that we all have has everything we need in it to apply in every situation or circumstance that we are, are, face, are faced with. All the way down to the instructions. If we're dealing with things in our mind, there's a scripture for that. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So if, if the mind, if, if the mind is going this way, that way, and it's got a 17 lane highway in it, we can reel it back. It's as simple as choosing to reel it back. God, I thank you that you are clearing my mind. I thank you that my mind can rest in you and in the promises of you and in the authority of you. Because God, in you, there is peace. And in, in you, I'm in my right mind. In you, my mind is firmly planted in the things of you. We have to speak. When we speak these things, we're activating that We can't just, it's time out for us to be closed mouth if you will. It's time out for us. We can't defeat the enemy and we can't win warfare with a mouth shut. It's time to release the sound and in releasing this sound and opening up our mouths, it strengthens the authority that's in us. It strengthens the power of God that dwells in us. The more we feed the God in us with God himself, the stronger we get. The more we feed the authority of God in us with the authority that God has given us, the stronger we get, the more fortified we get. It's about choosing to feed. It's about choosing to feed that which is positive, choosing to feed that which is nutritional and necessary in the spirit realm. But if we keep feeding our flesh, then our flesh is going to rule. It's like, I think it's called the good dog, bad dog syndrome. Yes, Sister D? Well, what I was going to say, a lot of times people want other people. Oh, hold on. Let me take this hand down. Okay. People want other people to do the work for them, and they don't want to do the work That's right. themselves. So what you're, what, you're what you're talking about right now is for someone to take ownership yes, of Authority that yes, God has given us. Yes, so ma'am. if if I'm waiting for brother so and so and sister so and so to pray for me to have this, 
I won't obtain it because it's something that I have to have a relationship with God in order to obtain this. Yes, ma'am. So once, I, once I build that relationship up, then I, I, like you said, you get in his word and you start reading, okay, I need some peace or I need this or I need whatever. Then you find yes, scriptures that's going to give you that peace. So now you know how to, like, when a disturbance comes, then you can say, I rem I know that, and I'll just use the most famous one. Yes, ma'am. See, well, I know God loves me. He gave me Jesus Christ. You know, I'm, I'm yes. But now you got something like you were talking about foundation. Now you got a foundation to build your faith on, to build your trust on, to build your relationship. You 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 have something. But if I'm waiting on somebody else to pray for me, come on. Everybody was like, just pray for me. Let's pray for ourselves. ourselves. Yes. And let's ask. And I'll say, Sister Natasha, the sister. Uh, Tasha to come in agreement, agreement. with me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so now I'm walking in authority because now I have some, and I say like this, I got some backup because come I'm on. praying and my backup is praying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And it's not just somebody, and I'm sitting around eating um, cookies and y'all praying. So that makes no sense. So we have to be able to get into position so we know how to Everything you're talking about that we know how to do this for ourselves. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that and, and thank you for that, Sister D, because we have to, again, doing our part. This is not, we can't be lazy and do the will of God. It is not, let's just let's just call a spade a spade. You, you, we can't be lazy about this. We can't be lazy and we can't be unwilling we have to be willing to do our part it's not all up to god it's not all on god and it's not all on our leaders it's not all on our fellow sisters and brothers we got we i'll put it on me i was doing my part when i wanted to go get my weed i was doing my part when i was sitting here cut, wanting to cut somebody out oh i did my part and i did it well mm -hmm. so what's the problem mm -hmm. i'm so I'm going to be about it in the streets, in the world, but then I'm going to be a punk when I get to Christ? Oh, no. No. And it's not the, the world or religion will say, oh, well, you're being arrogant. No, I'm being confident. There's a difference. To be confident in the things of God is to know that you know that you know that you know that when you do your part, when you do what is required of you as an individual, because this is individual personal as well as corporate but if our personal ain't lined up how can we help corporately if our foundation in the authority of god is not firm individual in our walk in relationship with god there's no way we can speak that to to a corporate to the corporate church we have to be willing we can't overthrow a thing until we're willing to overthrow ourselves. Well, what do I mean by that? Denying myself of everything that I know that will keep me away from God. Denying myself, and in denying myself, it's really not as hard as I've made it or used to make it. Why? Because his word is firm and is sure and is right, right by itself. He don't need our help. That's why he tells us to not add to or take away from. Because it's right, right by itself. So no matter what the circumstances is, if the bank account is in a negative stance, guess what? God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He, he is a king of king and Lord of lords. He has authority over finances. He's the God that can allow an envelope, a delivery or a person or a package to drop on you when you least expect it, just when you think that time ran out on a situation. Ah. God. How you say that, that how you say that right there? That right there. <laughs> that that because that's that's how he does. Because he is time, because he is our provider. And when he really is what we say out our mouth, we have to stop being so lackadaisically saying stuff because it sounds good and because it tickles this right here. We have to understand that when we say 
these things that God is all power, that God is all knowing, all seeing, that, 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 that is power in and of itself. We are decreeing and declaring what he's already decreed and declared. That's a teaching for a whole nother day. But understanding that in these things, there has to be a willingness. We can't fight if we don't have on the armor. We can't fight if we don't have the proper weaponry. And one of the number one weaponries is that authority. And that authority is obtained by having that firm foundation. Well, what is that firm foundation? Christ Jesus. He is that firm foundation. He's the solid rock on which I stand. Mm -hmm. All other ground is sinking sand. I done been in sinking sand before. I ain't trying to go there no more. Because see, it's just that it's necessary right now. And I understand it. And I have to go back to what Sister D said, Mother D, because it's not being taught. So we have been killing ourselves unnecessarily. So instead of being equipped, we've been getting whipped because we have not been, we, oh God, oh. Because, because we have not been taught. We're taught on a surface level versus the meat. And, and, and this thing is far beyond surface. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. We have to learn to see it in that realm. Amen. Amen. God, God Amen. is awesome. This, this, this right here. Th yeah, this right here has, has took me to a whole nother thought process in the things of God. When he, he told me the topic, I was like, huh? What was it? <laughs> you want me? I don't feel qualified. And, when I told him, I said, God, I don't feel qualified to talk on this topic. He says, then who is who actually qualified you to walk then? Did you qualify you? I said, no, sir. He said, I equip whom I qualified. And on that note, he shut my mouth down real quick. Yeah, that's the word of God, though. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Moses tried that. Moses did try to. <laughs> but God, I don't feel qualified. And and see, even in that, what y'all talking about? Moses. She said, she said, don't for, Tasha said, don't forget about Moses when Moses was saying, but God, I'm not of good speech and I, I'm yeah, not I articulate. Can't I, can't I can't do that with these people because I can't do, I can't even talk right. <laughs> and when I said, because when I said, well, God, this is the topic you want me to talk on, I don't feel qualified for this. But he had to deal with me. He was like, oh, ye of little faith. Uh -huh. And once he said that to me, I said, God, you got it, and that settles it. Well, you think about what he told any of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah. You know, he said, I'm God. I'll tell you what to say. I'll Amen. put the words in your mouth. Yes. Don't worry about the people. See, and this is what we, this is where that religion part get caught up. We worried about, I'm not the pastor, I'm not the bishop, I'm not the archbishop, I'm not the, the I don't know what no, all no. <laughs> All, all that them. stuff they got, you know, I don't wear the robe and the hats and all that stuff. Neither did Jesus. Right. Amen. If 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 he's told us to go and preach the like he did, he said, I equip you, and I'm teaching and I'm paraphrasing, and I'm yes, telling you to go forth to the nation. You just read that. I gotta go like I am. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You think about when David trying to fight Goliath, he couldn't put on Saul's armor and stuff. He, he told me right. he said, this stuff don't fit me. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, like me, if I put on a Cossack and a hat and all of this, I couldn't move in those in and, and minister like Come on. Woman. Come on. You know, I would have to take yes, off some stuff. Right. You know, Ooh, yes. So when God tells us to do something, we have to be obedient to do it. We don't look at what religion. When I say religiosity, religiosity made up. Put <laughs> that in the dictionary. We don't worry about that because right. if you're the word of God, if it's coming forth, it's gonna it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. Yes, ma'am. It's gonna empower you. It's gonna enlighten you. 
it's going to enrich mm-hmm. you. It's going to give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Not like what the enemy does. The enemy comes to kill, steal, destroy, and take the word, take the yes. sin. So mm-hmm. when you are like you teaching this tonight, awesome. You know, awesome. Mm-hmm. You, 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 mm-hmm. you, and I'm going to say this like this. You could sit at the table with the with the with the um theologians. Why not? Because it's the word, it's not you, it's not me, it's not Tasha, it's the word of God coming through us. We're vessels Amen. used by him, Thank not our words, but his, his and it words. goes back to the our father, not not our will, but his but will, will in us. Amen. Yes, ma'am. So yes, you know, ma'am. we got to, when he calls yes. us to go forth. We have to be ready. Yes. We have to be ready. And and I think with 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 us being able, like Apostle has given us like prayer. We got the prayer line, we got Bible study, we got Sabbath school. All yes. of that is, is equipment. Equipment yes. us to go out, mm-hmm. to go forth. Mm-hmm. Because how 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 can I tell a woman about what she's going through, even though I might not have gone through it, but the word of God will come to me to tell her so I can give her comfort. Amen. Or, 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 you know what I'm saying? Because we're, yes, studying, we're reading, we're, we're understanding what the word is saying. So when we go out, when we go forth, we'll be able to comfort a, a brother and a sister, yeah. a brother. Yes. In Christ. That's right. You know? And they That's all right. won't be drug addicts and they all won't be prostitutes and they no. all won't be. There'll be some sitting in the pew right next to us. Say that. Say but, that. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we got to be ready. And we can't be afraid of what God has given us to do. Because and, he told Jeremiah, he said, don't look at the people's face. Don't even look at their face. That's right. Words to say. You know, so why, why, why are we worried about if, if, if we... It's, it's the Christ in us. Amen. You know. Amen. Amen. And like you said, and and like you said, I think I think you said I'm not. I'm, I know you're saying a lot. I can do all things through Christ's strength. I yes. can do all things. Oh. So teaching teaching this class or getting up praying in the morning or whatever we may need to do, going out ministering in the streets or wherever hospitals or wherever He's calling us and equipping us to do, mm-hmm. we just go forward. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. And you did an excellent job. You know, excellent job. The words came forth. They were clear. They were. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, they were. You. You could. There were rich words that you could take and chew off of because it was very rich. Amen. God, I give you glory. Amen. To God I be give you glory, God. He, yes. He's equipping us. He's empowering. I mean, you know, because I just think about when we first started, but you and I, an apostle, we was on just the little two other nights. You had one night, I had another night. Yes, ma'am. We've come a long way since that. We've been a good yes. set, you know? Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. I'm, so I'm thankful. I am so thankful. It's all about us growing, and who, who was I think you said it, going and growing, or go. Somebody said it on one of the prayers, either yesterday or the day before, or something. Go and grow. Somebody said it. Okay. I can't going, going, going and growing. Well, I heard it. Somebody said. <laughs> Right. Some, it, it was said in the prayer line. How about it? It, it was, was said, it was said in the, and that's what we have to do. We have to grow and go. Grow and go. Yes. Grow and go. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's the kind of stuff that you hold on to, little sayings like that. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, we're going forward, you know. Yes, that's like right. Not looking back. Moving and we, we hold on to these things. You know, you may not know. Oh, it's on it's first John 16, 5, 4, 3. You may not got there yet to remember right. the scripture, but the words you can say, but I know he loves me. I know Christ died for me. I know that I'm Come saved, on. sanctified, and delivered and set. You know, you know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. But I might not know, but I'm gonna study myself to know that that's in First Corinthians 2 and 8 or whatever it may be. Come on. You know, gonna and say I it think this is what this is what all of this is all about. So we, we're sitting here, okay, we 
we got First Corinthians. We we walked over here and we looked at this scripture. We looked at Matthew, because some of us might not have never looked at First Corinthians or Matthew. Come on, that is so true. true. You know that is true. That is so so true. So, and and to me, you know, with the fivefold ministry, they always talk about the first four, but the last one is the teacher. Amen. That's and the last one. It's the one about had to teach the apostle. Come on. Somebody Come had on. to teach the prophet. Come on. Somebody, Somebody had to teach the bishop. Had, That's right. Somebody had to teach them. They had to go through that last That's one. Right. To the posi- then he said, take him, make the last. First, first, the first, the first, the first last. That's saying. what he said. I'm just saying. That's I what he said. That's what he said. And you yes, think ma'am. about it. Because all, it's always the last one. But you got to be taught in order to grow. That's right. Have to be taught. Absolutely. And you did Absolutely. an excellent job teaching us about authority and foundation. Amen. So Amen. I give God all the glory. Uh, yeah. I I the others miss it. I just say they missing. They miss they miss <laughs> they miss. I um <laughs> am humble and grateful all at the same time. And just leaving this for for some fresh manner. Mm-hmm. Colossians chapter three. Oh. Hmm. Oh, it's funny, I was already there. And on your own spare time, I would suggest reading the whole chapter. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to read. Verses one through eight. (laughs) If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life has hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil consump- consumptions and convert convertedness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them but now ye also put off all these anger wrath Malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. I'm going to stop right there. Why? Because they, from where I've read from verses one through verses eight, these are just the beginning of the instructions of how to start to begin to walk in the authority of Christ and to be able to hold ourselves accountable to be able to do our works that we have to do in order to be able to operate in the things of God, in the authority, in his power, in his boldness, in his confidence. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for Bible study tonight. I thank him for doing what he does oh so beautifully and oh so well. Does anybody have anything they would like to say? Thank God for the word tonight. Thank God for letting God use you. Reiterated for me a lot of things that God has allowed me to think and see in this time frame for myself to just do do better and be better. So thank God for. Amen. Amen. And all I'm gonna say is when you read this and you were talking about us, um, if we start looking at how many use. Y-O-U, or in the yes, Bible, ma'am. it's personal. It makes it you talking about yes. yourself and your. That's that's not 
them. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not a them. It's you a, know what I'm saying? Me. So yes, we are looking at these, how many yous are in here. That's what you were talking about. That's that personal, mm -hmm. making it personal. Mm -hmm. personal. So you can mm -hmm. see yourself in the Bible when you start seeing that. Just, you just read it. said, for you are dead and your life. Your life. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So we yes, start just looking at the simple words. Simple. Words yeah. that we think we knew, but we, we he'll he'll bring it to full understanding as we dive further. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma thank you. Thank God for the word tonight and the study tonight. Thank God for you. May he bless you richly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can I ask for you all to keep me in prayer? We have to travel to um we're we're all leaving for Corpus Christi, Texas. On uh, I'm leaving Thursday to pick up my daughter and my grandchildren. Okay. Um, the diagnosis came back for my for my, for my son-in-law. So um, I'm still believing. I don't know what the one else, but I'm still believing. Uh, I asked mm -hmm. her if they were praying. She said yes, they were praying. Um, we're leaving uh, Thursday, Friday. We'll be back. I'll be back on uh, Tuesday, but I'll try to catch you know as many uh, prayers as I can because I'll be on the road and then I, if I'm, you know, with family and stuff. So, but I'll try to catch as much as I can. But if you all just traveling grace and cause that's a long journey. It's about 16 hours of driving. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I've already been praying would just keep us covered and, mm -hmm. and uh, got a lot of people coming down to, to, uh, to visit with my son-in-law, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's the will of God. It's not, it's not my will. It's, his, it's God's will. So I'm just glad I'm able to to uh, drive the children to take to spend some time with their father. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, if there be nothing else, um, we will pray. And close out. All right. Uh, Mother D, what's your son in law's name? One more time, please. Luis Gutierrez. Luis is L U I S. Yes, ma'am. Lu Luis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for Bible study on this evening, God. Thank you, God, for administering your word to we, your people, Father, just the way that you had designed and ordered, Father God. Thank you, God, that it will be meat into our spirits, God, that we will be able to meditate, God. And as we meditate on your word, God, that we'll be able to apply and activate it in our daily walk with you, Father. God, we thank you, Father, that you watered your word. As you planted it, you watered it. And as you watered it, God, you grow it in us, oh God. Father God, we thank you, Father, that your word in and of itself is a fortifying God in our in our walk with you. And it, it strengthens us in the things of you, the attributes of you, the qualities of you, the character of you, the power of you, and the authority of you. And God, for that, we say thank you on this evening, oh God. Thank you, Father God, that for each and every person, Father, that was attended, Lord God. Thank you for those who desired to attend but had other things that they had to do. God, we speak, God, that you bless and keep them as they go on their journeys, God, of strengthening their personal relationship with you, oh God, and walking in your word and walking in the promises that you have already ordained and given unto us, oh God. Father God, we want to lift up Mother D, God, and Brother Luis, oh God, and his family and his children, oh God. Father God, thank you for traveling mercy for Mother D, oh God, as she goes to, from, and back, oh God. Thank you for going before her, with her, and after her. God, thank you that your angels of protection be around each and every tire, the engine, the transmission, the steering wheel. Oh God, that no hurt, harm, or danger will come upon them. God, we bind up all accidents right now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Jesus, oh God. And we plead the blood of Jesus, God, over them and the vehicles, oh God. God, thank you, God, for making the way smooth and making it straight, God. Thank you, God, that you show up and show out, God, on Brother Luis's behalf, Father God. Thank you, God, for what you're doing, and thank you, God, for what you're done, and thank you, God, for what you're gonna do. Because, God, we're standing on the report of you, Father, because you have the final say, God. And when doctors can't do anymore, God, that is a prime opportunity, Father, for you to come in like a mighty rushing wind, God, and heal and deliver and set free. So, God, we still speak healing over his life, God. We still speak total and complete manifestation of being made whole in and through you, oh God. Thank you for strengthening each and every family member, oh God. Thank you for guarding their hearts, Father. Thank you for comforting them, oh God, even in this time, oh God. Thank you, God, for lifting them up. Thank you, God, for loving on them even the more. Now, God, allow your angels of protection to go and make the way smooth and clear, God, for travels, God, from where Sister D lives in Missouri, God, all the way to Texas, God. God, you do it, God, and you get the glory, Father. Thank you, Father God, that you will show up in a mighty mighty way. God, thank you that your manifestation power will manifest in a way that you've never manifested before. Oh God, and it will open up the eyes, oh God, of your children, God, and will strengthen them in their faith walk with you. God, thank you for doing it, God. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it. Now, God, we also lift up our apostle, Father. Oh, God, continue to strengthen her, keep her, wrap her, God. Continue to fortify her in the things that you have equipped and are preparing, God, to excel her into and pr propel her into. God, thank you for making every way for her. Thank you that she has no lack. Thank you, God, that everything she needs, God, you've already supplied. Now, Father, as we end this prayer, God, but to never leave your presence, God, thank you for sweet rest on this evening. God, thank you for binding up all hurt, harm, and danger. God, thank you that your angels are on their posts of protection, on their posts, God, surrounding us inside our homes, outside our homes, front yard, backyard, God, even in our vehicles, God. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, continue to do the work within the work, and God, we will, I will submit i will render unto you my reasonable service father i owe it to you and i don't take it lightly so god we thank you for this night we thank you for bible study and we render it back unto you and we give you glory honor and praise and it is in your son jesus's mighty name we do humbly pray amen and amen amen amen, amen. i love you guys love you god bless you all you guys have a